So back to our table, our stress equation is shown. And at point A, we're going to have a maximum value of shear, and it'll be pointing in the negative y direction. At point B, our shear stress is zero. Now let's calculate the value of shear stress on element A. First, let's find Q. Because A lies on the neutral axis, as shown here, we will take the area for our Q, that's the A prime area, as the area above or below of that point, and that'll be, and that area is a half pipe area. And we can find the Q value for this half pipe area as the Q value for the outside semicircle minus the Q value for the inside semicircle. These two terms represent the areas, and these two terms represent the centroid of a semicircle. And we get for a value of Q 4.14 inches cubed. The moment of inertia, I is the moment of inertia for the whole pipe section. And that can be calculated as shown. And then we get 18.70 inches to the fourth power. Now we can plug those values into our shear stress equation. This first term is our shear force. 10.8 kips. The next term is Q divided by I, our moment of inertia, and divided by T. T is the th width of the member at the point where the stress is being evaluated and parallel to the neutral axis. And that happens to be, and it so happens we're calculating stress on the neutral axis, so the width is the width of two pipe walls. And the pipe wall, we can see from our diagram, is 0.25 inches, so 2 times that is 0 0.5 inches. And we get a shear stress at point A equal to 4.78 KSI. Now let's consider the shear force in the z-direction. We found there was none, and so there is no shear stress acting at either point A or B in the z-direction. So we have considered our three forces. Now let's consider the three moments, beginning with the torque about the x-axis. We have a torque about the x-axis equal to 64,800 foot-pounds. And the stress equation associated with this torque is shown. We get a shear stress, and it is equal to the t internal torque times rho divided by j, our polar moment of inertia. And the stress distribution looks something like I've shown here with the green arrows. The stress is in the direction of the torque. It's greatest the outside of the pipe, where rho is at its largest. And it decreases linearly towards the center. That means that at point B, our shear stress will be the greatest. And at point A, our shear stress will be something less. That's because the rho value will be less. At point A, the direction of the shear stress as it flows around this pipe is in the positive y direction. So I'll draw it as shown with this green arrow and the three other arrows up here. Notice that the green arrow, as a result of our shear stress, is in the opposite direction as the beam stress that occurred from our shear force in the y direction. At point B, we follow the stress around the pipe, and at point B, the shear stress is pointing in the negative z direction. So I will draw that as shown, with the green arrow on the top, and the other three appear to balance the element. Back to our table, our stress equation is T rho over J. And at points A and B, we have different values of rho, which will give us different values of stress calculate our stress at points A and B, we need to find the polar moment of inertia. And the polar moment of inertia is equal to pi over 2 times the outer radius to the fourth power minus the inner radius to the fourth power, which is actually equal to double the moment of inertia I. We get 37.4 inches to the fourth. We can calculate shear stress at point A as our internal torque 
64.8 kip feet. Multiply by 12 inches per foot to convert feet to inches. Here's our row value, 2.75 inches, divided by our polar moment of inertia. We get a value of 57.18 ksi. At point B, here's the equation. The only thing that's different is our row value. At point B, it is 3.0 inches, and we get a slightly higher stress, 62.37 ksi. Now let's consider our moment about the y-axis. It occurs because of the sine weight. And we calculated previously that internal moment to be 9,000 foot-pounds. And the stress associated with an internal moment is a normal stress. And it is equal to m times the distance from the neutral axis divided by the moment of inertia. When bending about the y-axis, our neutral axis is the y-axis. That means uh, the stress will be increasing linearly in the perpendicular direction, which is these along the z-axis. That's why z shows up in this equation here. And we see that at point A, we are at some distance from the neutral axis, so we will have stress. And we see from the direction of bending, and using the right-hand rule can be helpful in identifying uh, that this side on the positive z direction is in tension. And in the negative z direction, the pipe cross section is feeling compression. So here at point A, we are feeling a tension stress. I'll draw that as shown. Notice it's in the opposite direction to our axial, the stress resulting from our axial load. Notice that the normal stresses are drawn either pointing out of or pointing into a face on this cube, while the shear stresses are drawn parallel to the faces of the cube. Now at point B, which happens to lie on the y-axis, which is our neutral axis, the stress will be zero. So there will be no normal stress contribution from our moment about the y-axis. Going to our table, our stress equation is sigma is equal to m times the distance from the neutral axis. In this case, it's along the z-axis, divided by the moment of inertia. And our z-value for point A is the inner radius 2.75 inches. Sigma, our normal stress at point B, is 0. Previously, we calculated the moment of inertia to be 18.70 inches to the fourth. Because it's a pipe, the moment of inertia is the same no matter which axis we're considering. We can then calculate stress at A to be the moment 9 kip feet times 12 inches per foot to convert feet to inches times our distance from the neutral axis, which is 2.75 inches, divided by the moment of inertia, 18.70 inches to the fourth and we get a value of 15.88 ksi. And that's acting in tension. Now, finally, one last internal moment to go. And that's the moment that is the result of the wind load on the sign. And that is causing bending of the post backwards. It's a bending about the z-axis in the positive direction. And the stress equation will be the same stress equation we use for the moment about the y-axis, except that now our moment is about the z-axis. That means the z-axis is our neutral axis. And the distance from the neutral axis will be the distance along the y-axis. That's why y is in this equation. And our moment of inertia is our moment of inertia about the z-axis. We can see from our stress distribution that point A lies on the neutral axis. And so it will have a stress contribution of 0. There is no stress contribution from bending about the z-axis at point A. However, at point B, there will be a stress contribution. In fact, the stress at point B is the largest magnitude stress. And we can see from the right-hand rule that this half of the cross-section, which contains point B, will be in tension. So there will be a large tension stress here at point B. To our table, our stress equation is shown. It's the normal stress at point A from the moment about the z-axis is 0. And at point B, we can calculate it using a value for y, our distance from the neutral axis, equal to 3 inches. And it will be a tension 
stress. Previously, we calculated the moment of inertia. It's 18.70 inches to the fourth. So we can calculate the stress at point B. The moment is 75.6 kip feet times 12 inches to convert feet to inches times 3 inches, that's the distance from the neutral axis, our z-axis, to point B, 3 inches away, divided by the moment of inertia, and we get the stress at point B is equal to 145.54 ksi. And now let's go to our table. You can see we have now found stress, either normal stress or shear stress, resulting from each of these internal resultant forces. Now the problem asked us to show the results on differential volume elements located at both points. Now we have been accumulating the stresses at these points as we've gone along. Now let's put the values to them. First, let's consider the normal stresses acting at point A. As you can see, we only have stresses in the what is along in the x direction. And our contributions to that stress are uh, the axial load, the stress from the axial load, which was a compressive stress, and our stress from the weight of the sign, which, which produced bending stress, which is a normal stress, and that's 15.8 ksi, uh, which is a tension stress. And the stress from the moment about the z-axis was found to be zero. So we will combine our stresses for to find the net stress acting on that differential element and it will be 15.6 ksi. We can see that that compression stress reduced our tension stress somewhat and here is the net result. It's a net tension stress acting in the x direction. Now let's consider the shear stresses. We had two contributions to shear stress and they were both acting in the y axis. One of them acting in the negative y direction, one of them in the positive y direction. We will combine them, uh, and it looks like the positive direction will win out. So we'll take 57.8 ksi, subtract 4.78 ksi, and the net result is 53.0 ksi acting in the positive y direction. And this here is our final differential volume element for point A. Now let's consider point B. First, let's look at the normal stress. We only have normal stress acting in the x direction. Here are the three contributions really only two. Uh, we have a compressive stress, 0.33 ksi, and a very large tension stress, 144.5 ksi. We combine them and we will get 144.2 ksi in tension acting in the x direction. For shear stress, well, only one non-zero cont contributor, and that is acting in the negative z direction. 62.37 ksi. We will add it to our differential element and now our problem is complete. We solved this problem by applying the principle of superposition. We took each of these resultant loads and evaluated them one at a time to find the stresses on our differential volume elements. Then at the end we combined the stresses to get our final result. And we're done.